At this point, we're left with 12 capacitors. 10 of these uh, 0.1 microfarad marked 104, and two 1 microfarad marked 105. Now the 105s go on either side of this toroid. They're the red ones right here. The remaining 10 capacitors are these red ones shown here. These are the two I just installed. So we installed all 10 of these. Now all of the capacitors have little rectangular boxes around them. Here, here, here. here, here. So make sure you're installing them in the little rectangular boxes. For example, I could have installed them in these two holes. Oh, that's not right. They go inside the box. Here we are, I hope, with all the capacitors installed. All the ceramic capacitors, I should say. There are four through-hole inductors. They're all the same value. They're installed with here, 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 and here. And the way they're done, it, it's done hair, hairpin, they call it. Now it doesn't really matter which end you pick. I'm going to pick the one with the brown line on it and I'm going to turn it this way so it's parallel. Okay, so it's shaped like a hairpin. It's installed so that the inductor body goes into the colored hole, or the double circle hole, whatever you want to call it. That's a good view of it. And just goes like that. Four of these. There are a bundle of resistors. I didn't count them. Two of them are larger than the rest. See what I mean? This one and this one. These two resistors that are larger than all the rest are 220 ohms. There are 220 ohm resistors in the smaller version. Of these two large resistors one goes here and one goes here. And again, they're hairpin. With the installation of these two half watt resistors, we can proceed and install all the rest of the resistors on the board. Pay particular attention to values. I don't trust my eyes well enough to use color codes alone. I would verify the resistance with a meter. The rest of them are all hairpin and the circles don't indicate which way the body goes. Okay, and it doesn't matter, they can go either way. I would refer to the QRP Labs instructions and get an idea of the orientation of the body. It may be that 
two resistors might interfere with each other if they're not oriented as shown here. Electrically, it doesn't matter. All of the fixed resistors are installed now. And the next step is to install these two potentiometers. They're marked 472, but they're only, the, that's the only two in the parts kit, so it's hard to mix them up. They just snap in these holes. So they go just like that. They won't go any farther in because the metal widens out here. These potentiometers sort of have a flat side and they'll go towards the end of the board with the notch in it. Now it's important to do this. Turn both potentiometers counterclockwise. That's this way. We have a couple of electrolytic capacitors to install. These are polarized. The circuit board is marked with a plus. One of them is a 10 microfarad and one of them is a 470 microfarad. In each case the positive lead goes this way. 470 microfarad. The long lead get up here. The long lead is positive, the marked lead is negative. By marked I mean this white band. And the 10 microfarad is just a smaller version of the same thing. Long lead positive. Next thing we have to do is install D201. Can't make it out very well in the cell screening, but you can see very faintly a, a sort of arrow shaped silk screening on a solder pad. That arrow is pointing towards this hole. D201 goes in these two holes. The diode's polarized, it's marked with this white band on one end. This white band goes in this hole. So the white band goes down and what we'll do is bend a hairpin on the end opposite the white band. Then we'll insert the white banded wire into this hole. Now these wires fit tightly in the hole so you have to snug them down a little bit. Now, the resistors, these capacitors, these inductors, they had no polarity. But the diode does. There are five of these three terminal devices. They're flat on one side and they're rounded elsewhere. And they are not the same. Q201 is an n-pin transistor. It should be marked with a 3904 if not the full number. Then we have uh, these four. They'll be marked BS107. And then we have this one which is a 5 volt uh, 100 milliamp regulator. 78L05. Be sure you segregate them. 
the first one of these three terminal devices is uh, the 2N3904. On this drawing and circuit board, on the drawing it's called out like this or like this. Okay, it's a semicircle with a line and then a flat line defining the exterior. So the flat face of this Q201 goes to the short end of the board as the board end that has the cutoff. Looking at the board though, so you see the silk screening shows a circle and a flat line again towards the end of the board with the cutoff. But the leads, instead of being flat or in a straight line, are, are in sort of a triangle shaped. So what you need to do is take the center lead and bend it away from the flat spot just a bit to get the legs into a triangular shape. Turn it over and insert it in this three holes. Just push it down about that high. And we're going to do the same thing for some of the rest of these three-legged devices. Not all of them, though. Four of these devices are BS170 MOSFETs. We'll take three of them. We'll take these three devices and insert the leads in these nine holes. Three of them here, three of them here, three of them here. And what we want to do is insert these with the flat faces generally facing this hole. To do that we might have to spread the leads but we're going to keep them in, in a flat plane. Then sort of bring them back together a little bit, holding them here. I'm bringing the ends back a little bit. Sort of curve the leads a little. We'll put them in flat side facing the hole. Push it down far enough and bend it over so that it lies flat. Take it back out. We want it to lie flat face down right like that. We don't want it over top of the hole. We want it back here somewhere. and then bend it forward. It's laying flat. Then bring them back till they're at right angles to the circuit board. So we have the transistor laying on its face but not soldered. Do that to all three of them. The idea is to get them all three laying flat against the board, not covering that hole. The reason is these MOSFETs are temperature sensitive and they're in a circuit and we'd like them to be all the same temperature, all three. So they're laying against a flatted heat sink, so to speak, with a hole in the center and the three transistors. At some point in time, and we're not to that point yet, we're going to take this screw and put it through this washer and put it through the hole. It's going to end up looking something like this. 
So it's important, we haven't soldered these transistors yet. It's important when we solder them that we manage to hold them flat while we solder them. So we want to end up like this. I put the washer and the screw, which was in the kit, and I found a, an M3 and just ran it up tight, not tight, just finger tight, to hold these transistors sort of flat. I'll turn it over and solder it. With the transistors all soldered in place, I'll rotate that screw back out. Now, don't lose the screw and washer. Still have two of these three terminal devices left. One's a low voltage regulator and one's a MOSFET. We have two of these little devices. They have what appears to be a heat sink, but really isn't, sticking up. A metal back. Viewed from the top, you can see they've got a rectangular plastic body with a metal tab on it. They're identified as these. Uh, 9024. They're installed like this and this, where this is the metal tab. So they just drop in. No need to bend the leads, just stick them in the holes. And there we, we go. One transistor, the metal tab is towards the circuit board. The other one is away. We have another one of these uh, BS-170s. It installs in this triangular hole pad here. Flat surface uh, facing this way. Push it down like the breast. Splay the legs out a little bit. We have one of these left. It had better be a 78L05. If not, somewhere along the line we've installed the wrong component. And it is a 78L05. It will install here. Another triangular hole pad and the flat will face inward.